And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to the channel where we talk about anything related to comic books. In today's video, let's dive deeper into the world of Marvel Comics and talk about Days of Future Past. Most of you are probably familiar with this story because of the extremely popular movie with the same name. So, gather around true believers because today I'm going to tell you the actual story that the movie was based on. And with no further ado, let's start. Before we start, let's just talk about the people who helped in the creation of this phenomenal story that inspired so many movies and spin-offs. So, the story was released in two parts. In 1980s, The Uncanny X-Men 141 and 142, written by Chris Claremont and John Byrne, who also illustrated the story. John Byrne's designs were inked by Terry Austin, and colored by Glynis Wayne, while Tom Orzechowski was in charge of the lettering. The story takes place in 2013, which sounds normal, but remember it was written in the 80s, so this was the future. In the future, New York is led by sentinels that hunt and slay mutants. Why? Well, back in 1980, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants murdered presidential candidate Robert Kelly along with Charles Xavier and Moira McTaggart to teach humanity to fear and respect the power of the Homo Superior, the mutants. And they did start to fear them, but also hate them, and in 1984, an anti-mutant candidate was elected for president. This led to the activation of the Sentinels that murdered thousands of mutants and even non-mutant super beings like Spider-Man, for example. Even though they were supposed to protect humans from the mutant threat, they soon enslaved them all and by 2013, the North American continent was under their complete control. People were divided to three classes. The normal humans that don't possess any mutant genes, the anomalous humans that have potential mutant genetic material and could give birth to mutants, and of course, the mutants. Unfortunately, almost every single mutant is dead, while other heroes had the same fate because they tried to help their mutant friends. Some of the last ones standing are Kate Pride, Colossus, Wolverine, Storm, Rachel Summers, Franklin Richards and the crippled Magneto, but they are all forced to have power dampeners that prevent them from using their powers and live in mutant concentration camps. Wolverine, who works for the Canadian Resistance Army, warns Kate that they are planning to launch a nuclear assault on America as it seems to be the only way to stop the Sentinels. To prevent that from happening, Kate and the rest of the X-Men gather to create a device that would diffuse the power dampeners so that they can stop the Sentinels and prevent a nuclear holocaust. Using pieces that Wolverine gives them, they manage to complete the device after carefully transporting each piece to their headquarters without the Sentinels knowing what they're doing. After diffusing the power dampeners, they all get their powers back. What's the plan now, you ask? Well, since the whole Sentinel thing started back in the 80s, they wanted to find a way to go back in time to prevent all of this from happening. So their best card is Rachel Summers, the daughter of Jean Grey and Scott Summers. Rachel, using her powers, managed to send Kate Pride's consciousness back in time to her younger self in October 31st, 1980. Now, all she's got to do is prevent the death of thousands of mutants and superheroes. Simple, right? After Kate is sent to the past, her younger self in 1980 faints and when she wakes up, her consciousness is replaced with the one of Kate from the future. After waking up, Kate explains to the X-Men the situation and tells them what's going to happen if they don't stop the plans of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Even though not everyone believes her immediately, they decide to go to Washington to check on Charles, Moira and Senator Kelly anyway. Of course, Kate's story turns out to be true and the Brotherhood, with Mystique as their leader, attacks, but thankfully the X-Men arrive just on time to stop them. Each X-Men takes on one of the evil mutants, but while they're fighting, Mystique sprays a paralyzing nerve gas to Charles Xavier and Moira McTaggart after disguising as a police officer to trick them. In 2013, Wolverine helps the X-Men escape the concentration camp, but Franklin Richards is killed by a sentinel which calls for more of them so as to slay the remaining mutants. 
every mutant fights against them so as to protect Rachel and Kate and give them enough time to succeed in their plan. Unfortunately, even Wolverine and Storm are killed and Colossus is the next to suffer that same fate. Meanwhile, Rachel hides and hopes that she'll last long enough for Kate to save the future. Back in 1980, we find Destiny, one of the evil mutants, about to kill Senator Kelly. And since all the other X-Men are fighting the evil mutants, there isn't anyone that can stop her. Except for Kate Pride, who knows about what's going to happen, surprises her and saves the senator, thus preventing the horrible future that would come if not for her interference. Then, since her presence there isn't needed anymore, Kate from 2013 leaves young Kitty's body. Xavier and McTaggart are rescued, the Brotherhood is apprehended, and the future is saved. However, Mystique is still somewhere out there, and Robert Kelly seems to still think of mutants as a threat because of the attempt on his life. He even decides to cooperate with Sebastian Shaw and Peter Geertz to construct a new series of Sentinels. But if the Sentinels are created, then that means that nothing changed. Well, only time can tell. For this, my friends, is a story for another time. Well guys, this was Days of Future Past. What do you think? Do you think the comic or the movie was better? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you did, you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button, and allowing all notifications. Until the next time, goodbye true believers!